Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Tonight we're going to look at something in the book of 1 Kings, and it's something that appears a lot in 1 and 2 Kings, and it will become a very frequent trend if you decide to traverse these books. I certainly hope you do, because these are incredibly fascinating books. There was a certain charm and a certain air to 1 and 2 Samuel. Maybe it was just because... It was the beginning of the kingdom of Israel, and David was a huge part of it. Maybe that's why. I just, I really particularly liked those books. First, that the whole Bible is really good, don't get me wrong, but let me just be honest. There are some books that I like more than others. There are some verses that are really, really special to me, and some stories that really hit close to heart and close to home. When you read the Bible, some things tend to stick out at you. And I think that's completely on purpose, and... It's part of the Lord's design, and it's also part of just who we are as human beings. You read a big work like this, you're going to find some stuff you like. And all oh, that's a giant tangent. You're very welcome. 1 Kings chapter 15, verse 9. In the 20th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, Asa became king over Judah. So there's a lot of juxtapositions between the king of one nation and the king of another nation. That happens a lot in these books and it's a good way of keeping track of like who's where and what and what time frame and reference is so it's good for that stuff as well verse 10 and he reigned 41 years in jerusalem that's a pretty long reign for back in that time generally the reigns were 20 years or less so he had a good run his grandmother's name was macha the granddaughter of abishalom Asa did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, as did his father David. So now we have a statement of whether what he did, his overall reign and who he was as a person, whether he was right with the Lord or not. Some of the kings of Judah did get it, some didn't. Apparently Asa got it. And he banished the perverted persons from the land and removed all the idols that his fathers had made. Hey, thumbs up for him. Also, he removed Macha, his grandmother, from being queen mother because she had made an obscene image of Asherah. And Asa cut down her obscene image and burned it by the brook Kidron. Another plus in his corner. So he did, he's, he's doing some good things. He's on a roll. He's serving the Lord. But the high places were not removed. And that's another very frequent theme throughout the book of the kings, first and second. A lot of the kings who did serve the Lord, pretty much none of them, except for one incredibly special king, removed the high places. Like we read, even Solomon fell to the high places. Pretty much all except one did. It's like they loved the Lord, they followed him, but the high places weren't removed. They had a problem. And he, and we just read, he did some good things prior to this as well. And then on with the rest of verse 14, Nevertheless, Asa's heart was loyal to the Lord all his days. He also brought into the house of the Lord the things which his father had dedicated and the things which he himself had dedicated, silver and gold and utensils. So yeah, he did. He overall did good. He didn't. He fell short. He didn't do quite all that he should have done, but he still did very well. He did good for himself. Now another thing we're going to see. Go down to verse 33. In the third year of Asa, king of Judah, Basha, the son of Ahijah, became king over all Israel in Terzah and reigned 24 years. He did pretty decently. He did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of Jeroboam and in his sin by which he, made, by which he had made Israel sin. And we have a king who did not do well. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. He walked in the path of Jeroboam. Jeroboam, like I said last time, he set such a horrible precedent for the entire nation, and I'm not sure if the king... I, I, I know none of the kings of Israel ever really served the Lord. They all did evil before the Lord. I'm not sure when those two golden calves were torn down and destroyed. I'm not sure when that happened. So, yeah. <laughs> it becomes a constant theme. You know, is the king of Judah going to get it right? And even if he does, he's going to mess up a few things. He's going to leave the high places. And the kings of Israel, all of them get it wrong. They all walk in the way of Jeroboam. They worship those idols. So we have a few things that are being set up for the book of the kings. And we also have a model of essentially what determines our success in life or not. It's not money. It's not, um, you know, 
how many possessions we had. It's not how many people we slept with. It's not how long we lived or how buff and bulky we are. Thank God that's not the case for me. It's all a matter of, did you serve the Lord or not? Maybe not perfectly, maybe not as well as you should have, but did you serve him or not? Or did you serve something else? That's the bottom line. And the, their entire reign, every single reign of every single king of Israel and Judah, at the very beginning of their story, it's like you, you get the summary version right then and there in the first few verses. Here's the name of the king. Here's how long they reigned. Here's the king of the other nation that they reigned alongside. And they served the Lord, or they did evil in his sight, by serving idols. So who are you serving? What's in charge of your life? It's probably not some literal idol, all those, although those do still exist in the world. But are you living for the Lord, or are you living for yourself? That alone determines success. And even though your life is much more complex than that, your, your worth as a being is much more complex than that, that's really what it boils down to. Are you serving the Lord or not? Are you living for Him and loving Him or not? Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you and God bless.